Hello, this is Linda of Crisis King Forever. I wanted to do a video today of a meditation, and it's going to be us going into heaven together. Just like when you go into certain stores and they have special perfumes in the air that they spray into the air to give an ambiance and a vibe and to change the chemistry in your brain. When you really think about the fact that we're chemically kind of bound and limited and um, it can kind of sway the way we perceive reality, it's the difference between somebody who... Um, is somewhere in the DSM on a certain level or a more extreme level is really just chemistry in the brain, you know, and you can see through people like the son of Sam, how there are guards who claim that he used to howl at night when he first entered the prison, but now he's there claiming that he wants to stay there for Christ because he's the son of hope now. And so mental illness is overcome, drug addictions overcome, people over have overcome many things in Christ, who is the one who now created the brain and the brain chemistry. So if you really have faith in pe people like Bath and Body Works and the way they make you feel, because you, you know, because you've entered that environment and you felt it yourself, or when you go to um, Disneyland, you know, and Disneyland has special little scents and they have mists in the air to kind of give you a whimsical vibe and atmosphere. And they understand there's a huge part of the cell is when you enter, your environment is changed on multi-dimensional levels. How much greater is God able to do what he does in heaven? Um, I pray to God about this and I have prayed that I pray everybody has a real true experience of heaven. Um, hopefully not near death type experience, but more like when you fall asleep and you're given a dream. I pray for that for everybody. Um, and it's highly frustrating to me because I do feel like it would probably convert a lot of people. Um, maybe God obviously knows more than I do. I'm not saying I, I understand people. Maybe he believes it would push people away. Or maybe he, maybe he has a different understanding of how people work than what I understand. So I'm going to do... Um, I'm going to do what I need to do, what I, I know will help assist the kingdom of God because the Holy Spirit has selected, you know, me and you and everybody. It's put a little light switch on inside of our, our soul and, and our eyes to see and experience the world in such a way that the Holy Spirit can use whatever gifts that not only does he give us, but already exist within us, um, our talents. Uh, and I know talents is money. I know this. I know that's what the Bible is referring to. I'm talking about real talents um, or skills or things that your mind is, is leaning towards. You're not mathematical. You're more artistic or um, you like to write a story instead of being told one or to read one. Um, that's part of my problem with reading is I actually get so caught up in where I think the story should go. And my idea feels better to me that I stop reading because I go, this isn't interesting. It's flat. It's not multidimensional. I don't really like the story and I don't like where it's going. Uh, so, you know, um, but very rarely am I ever surprised by uh, people who actually take a story into a direction that I didn't predict or uh, that's more interesting than what I thought should have happened. Uh, anyway, I know that sounds really, I don't know, maybe proud or something, but it, it really just stops me from, from furthering, especially um, fictional stories. But this one particularly is not fiction, it's true um, in the sense that when you enter heaven, Everything I'm going to tell you isn't exactly what heaven is because I don't know, but I do know for a fact, just like entering Bath and Body Works, your, your brain chemistry will change. Because, well, you won't have a brain, uh, you'll be in heaven as a spiritual being, but all of these things that we're limited by here in this place are going to be totally different. So how much more can he manipulate that environment and what that's going to feel like um, if you enter and are unaware and uh, again, that's my other, I, I would say the word is complaint to God is, I don't know, know if it's right that people enter this atmosphere that God is in, you know, this place where he holds us, whether it's, I don't think it's the Holy of Holies, I think it's something else, somewhere else, where all of a sudden logic falls upon you. Common sense is just very present. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, you were a bird that was swimming in the water and now something's broken you out of the tops of the waters and you're flying above the air and you go, oh my gosh, I was created for this. You're the fish who's been out of water your whole life, finally in, just entering that place where you can breathe again. When you're in the presence of God, it is a reality and an atmosphere like none other. 
you realize I was made to be in this place. It's probably what really serious drugs feel like, I'm sure, because it is the most addictive thing. I, I don't, I've never done serious drugs, but, but it's very addictive. It's like I pray to experience that a few times over, if not every single day, because the few, like two times I had something similar where God prayed over me, or I should say sang over me, and uh, I have a video about that and uh, getting a tour of heaven. These two things have sustained me through really difficult and dark times. And it, I'm hoping it will continue to the my last day because it's rough. But, um, but God is good and he's gracious. And so I figured the best thing I can do is share through a story. And I know that's a really bad, like long introduction to something. But I get really, really funny about the idea of saying something fictional uh, that is about something as reverent as the place where God dwells or where he holds us because that place, the air is sweet and all of a sudden it all, everything makes sense. You're just pushed into this other reality where you go, Oh, life is so small. And the things I worried about didn't really matter. The things that stressed me out, the things I was chasing, it didn't really lead me anywhere. You know, I put all my energy in all the wrong places and that's a horrible time to figure that out because by that time, a lot of people are not in a place where they can go back and fix it. So that's my agenda here today. My intention is to say to you, let's meditate upon the story so that you can come to a logical place where if you enter, maybe you'll leave that little place thinking differently. Um, I don't know how else to express this, but let's say one day, you wake up and just like in a dream, dreams are crazy. Like you actually wake up and from dreams and go, Oh my gosh, I can't believe that was a dream. And that's just the small version of a bigger part of what, I mean, your, your mind does that to you. How much greater is God? So you wake up one day and this bright sunshine is beaming through and the way the light hits, you know, the bed and the floor and the way that's coming in, it's almost like you can hear the light. Like you can hear it. It's like um, wind chimes. And when you wake up, you right away can smell in the air. Something's different. And it's just like waking up on Christmas morning where you have anticipation that's very deep and wonderful. And you can hear people cheering outside. And then you go outside, right? Uh, you put on your robe, random robe. You're not thinking about what you're wearing. You're not thinking about your hair. You're not thinking about, you feel like you even smell good. <laughs> Like you don't, even brush your, you don't even brush your teeth and you run out to this, you know, cobblestone road and this beautiful place where everything's lit from within. The road is, is gold, transparent gold. Everybody's so excited. You see people that you know, you see your mom, your dad, all the people that, that you missed and that passed away. You're reuniting with them. You're so excited. And there's a rumor that there is a big party tonight and you guys are all walking down the street and experiencing this place and you're seeing all these businesses um, according to people who've been to heaven there are businesses and maybe you get to own a few maybe you're the person who in christ gets to walk around and um, pick a place where you want to make a very specific business and this time the agenda isn't money it's i want to sit here and, and paint and eat and be merry and continue to paint and express myself and my biggest inspiration will be the one who is the king and everybody even talks about that like i would love to have a bakery here i'd love to host the king and that's everybody's agenda and just like little kids that get excited together and they have like a mind melt together and you're in this place where it's reality is saying to you there is a center piece there's a center point here and the thing that's making this all work is a king and it's a very specific special type of king it's a just wonderful almost magical guy and you're like okay and I'll, i don't mean to call jesus a guy i'm just trying to make a point so you start getting excited too and you go well i know what my gifts and my talents are i'm going to create a business over here this this business front storefront is going to be uh set up and i'm going to wait for the day that he, i get to host him and it's going to be great and i'm going to play the piano for him or I'm going to do whatever my talent is to entertain this king because this place is quite wonderful you guys all go together to all these different events and you understand where you are you're like I was made for this place I get this but the only problem that you have is everybody seems to have an idea of what the name of the king is but you don't so there's an event and it's in a big coliseum 
and you enter this Colosseum, you sit next to your, your new friends that are as close to you as family, um, everybody around you, you're all connected in a way that's a union you've never felt before. Like everybody around you that you didn't know in life are now connected to you. And the king is in the top center and on a balcony looking over the Colosseum. And there is a lion in the Colosseum. The idea and concept of mercy, justice, um, majesty. I'll, that's what I'm referring to when I'm talking about the lion. I'm not talking about the lion of Judah or we're talking about the father being the lion. I'm not talking about that at all. I'm talking about the, if you were to take the words majesty, justice, truth, and put it in the in a like a form that could walk around and justify whatever it is, is the intention of the king is that's what that lion is we're we're here watching people entertain the king some people you know everybody gets a chance their name is called but you don't know their name until they walk up and they start singing they start doing whatever their talent is and um the king calls them by their name at the end but there's a few people that there's a hiccup, right? So they get called up. You don't hear their name. But as soon as they enter the arena, you either recognize them as, oh, that's my uncle. That's my cousin. That's this famous guy that we knew, you know, on earth. He was extremely famous during our time on earth. Uh, we know his name, but he doesn't know his name. He doesn't. So what happens is, the guy comes out, you know, the person who's supposed to be in the middle of the arena to offer whatever gift up to the king um, will, will come out. And all of a sudden, for one or two of these guys who, that you've seen, the whole audience gasps. You do too. You know who that is. He's one of the guys that mandated a type of medicine that killed millions of people. That's who he is during your time frame. And you're like, that's a guy totally responsible for this. But we can't judge him, but the lion can. And so as the guy is entering the arena, the lion starts to show signs of injury. And he looks, you know, almost beaten. And he looks like he has many different sores, maybe like poking from a sword or two in his body. And you're starting to realize that this manifestation of what's happening to this lion is what that man is guilty of. So, as this is happening, the king stands up. And the man realizes the only way to get out of this arena, this coliseum, the center of this coliseum, because we all know his name, is if his new name is called. And if the king recognizes him. So he calls up to the king and says, uh, king, king, don't you know me? D d please help me. The lion is gonna gonna attack me. I'm gonna die. And the king looks down and and is searching, you know, in his mind as, as desperately as possible. He's thinking, and you can see it on his face. He finally says to the guy, "What is your name?" The king calls out to the guy, "What is your name?" Because the guy doesn't know the king's name either. He doesn't know him. And that's this the whole point is he's the king saying to him, I don't know you. But even then, the king is desperate to try to search to the ends of the universe to try to save him from his fate. And right then and there, you can see in the look in the eyes of the guy as the lion approaches and then roars. We all, you know, all you in the Colosseum all cover your ears because the roar is so loud. You can feel the Colosseum shaking and the bricks, the bricks in the Colosseum shaking and something in your soul and even to the edges of this heaven there's there's a ripple there's an echo and as the line roars in front of this guy who's done these horrible things um, he evaporates and he completely disappears the second death so his soul has been removed it's been aborted then other people go up to entertain the king and, and they know his name and they're singing praises and songs and the lion is acting like a big cat, you know, chasing mice across the floor and, you know, rolling on its back and showing its belly and, you know, just being a, a, like a cat, like very domesticated, not really interested in what's happening, but very entertained nonetheless, sometimes snoring in a corner as each person goes up and it sings a song of sorrow, or, you know, it relaxes people. So the, the lion starts to sleep and 
this is all fun and games and great, but there are those few occasions where a few people go up and and ask for the king's help, but they don't know his name and he doesn't know their name either. And the lion roars and they simply disappear. And it's as though they never existed. You actually forget as soon as they're gone. And the next person that has come on stage that they ever existed in the first place. It's as though that that thing that happened during your time frame and your empire where people died because of a lie. Millions of people died because of a lie and were seriously injured because of a lie. It's almost as though it never happened. It's actually wiping away the tears of people who are all healed and present in this place. Now justice is served. And now you have faith in what's happening in this arena because you understand each of the people who have entered this arena have been judged correctly. But now they call your name. The problem is you don't really recognize your name either. And then you go into the center of the arena. The, the crowd gasps because they know who you are. <laughs> they know your name. You don't know your name. And they know your earthly name. God knows your new name, Jesus, who is the king, knows your earthly name. And you don't have anything planned. You're just standing there scared about this lion who's looking in your direction. The lion's eyes start to glaze over a little bit. It starts to look a little thirsty and hungry as it looks at you. And you start to go, oh, no, <laughs> this cannot be. No, 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 no. I, I recognize this environment. I recognize outside of this arena when I was planning, you know, the, the, the businesses I was going to create, not for money, but to entertain this king, whom I totally appreciate now. Like, I totally understand he is just. I understand this majesty and this truth and this reverence for justice. This, this is the truth. I saw it. I've seen it. I've seen the justice right here take place. And I got to spend time with my family. I got to see people resurrected. I, I, I was made to be here. I was a bird flying in the water and then I've escaped the water and here I am where I can fully breathe and fly to my fullest, spiritually, emotionally, mentally. I was made to be here. So the lion starts to approach you and starts to open his mouth to, to roar. You call out to the king, but you don't know his name. And he doesn't know yours either. And all of a sudden, you know your name. Your, or your human name starts to come to mind. And every single deed that you did in life is crushing you. And you realize, I'm about to be suffering the second death. I'm going to be aborted. I'm never going to leave this arena. This is the last time I will see these people's faces. And it turns out the last thing you think of is the most precious face you ever saw was the king that was standing up there that was searching the heavens and his whole mind trying to figure out what your name was. And he was so sad and so desperate. He was more sad than you were. And I, I don't want people to get there, to get in the presence of God. He is heaven. Like if you are standing before the judge who's judging you, you're in heaven. Wherever he is, heaven is. And if he's judging you at that very moment, which is which is what I told God, you know, as I prayed to him about this, I thought, you know, when you enter that place, your reality shifts and changes in a way that when you come back to here, this is a nightmare upon awakening, and you're back in the nightmare. It's like waking up, having a bad nightmare, going, phew, and then you go back to sleep and go, wait a minute, I know this isn't real. I know I'm sleeping. This isn't real. That's what it's like when you're in front of Jesus, when you're before the king is whatever reality he's in is so very real and so much more real than what we have here that people won't be able to that's why I'm telling you the story that's why I believe that's why the reason why I think God has put that burden upon me this is why I'm telling you this. I don't think it's a, cr a crime that God has done to people I'm not telling you this at all no when you hear people's testimony when you hear people's experience in Christ it helps bring that truth closer to home when you hear doctors, uh, really educated, respected people, scientists who have experienced God, who are like, whoa, these are logical people. What's happening here? And you, they say their, the name of the king is Jesus Christ. It starts to allow the Holy Spirit and, you know, the planting of the seeds and the watering of the seeds that, that the Holy Spirit gives to grow. And it brings that kingdom to this place. So that the waters you swim in as this, you know, fish out of water, you know, this place where you're not supposed to be, becomes a little bit less filthy. 
you know, and, and then your agenda and, you know, your sight in life becomes a little bit more clear. You have a little bit more of an idea of where, what path you should be taking because the water around you is not so murky. You're not brainwashed by this world. You know, this is not my home. And, but to feel it, to know it is one thing, but to actually feel it and have it saturate your deepest parts, you know, and have it be like, when you wake up in the, the morning, you're like, oh no, I'm still here. Like that place I know exists is not where I am yet. Tomorrow, maybe tomorrow, maybe tomorrow. And that's what I'm talking about. I don't want people to enter that place and really truly get that five second moment of that whole long story I told you of happiness. You feel it the moment you were in the presence of God. And then to have him look at you and say, I never knew you, you know? It's like, where do you go with that? I mean, we t people talk about hell. I think that's hell. You don't even have to drag somebody through fire. That's that's all the hell you need. When you realize how good he is and how it hurts him more than it would hurt you, and that it's it's a wasting his blood too. I mean, it's his blood he shed for real intention, real purpose, and it's a waste. And I don't I honestly think that God's so great there won't be a soul lost, but um. But I also think that means we have to put in the work, meaning we have to remind people uh, through whatever talents God gives us, whatever experiences he gives us, that that place is very real. And you don't want to discover that when you get there. You want to you want to be at least aware of where you're going and who he is and know his name and know his character, know his face and that he is God uh, so that you don't have to discover it too late. This is Linda of Christ is King forever. May God be with you.